Uh, standing by for us is Nancy Cordes. Nancy, can you hear us? Hi, can you hear me? I got you now. Yeah, totally. So we've got one week, but what happens after that? Well, it gives these negotiators in the House and Senate one more week to iron out a few outstanding details in this longer-term spending bill that they've got to keep the government running through the end of September. They were almost there. Uh, a few more um, items still left on the table, and essentially they said, we just need a little more time. And so um, the House and Senate both just voted on this one-week spending bill. Keep the lights on for one more week so that members of the House and Senate can go home for the weekend and give the negotiators a little more time. Nancy, as we approached uh, this deadline, uh, specifically last week and earlier this week, President Trump seemed to be indicating that he wanted funding for the wall. He wanted to even try to get something done on health care. That all fell by the wayside. Um, what's your take? What are you hearing from lawmakers about the tactics the White House uh, tried to use to get some of these things done before that what some people are now calling an arbitrary measurement, the 100 days of the presidency? Right. It doesn't appear that any of those White House actions really helped negotiators all that much. Uh, it probably did drag out the process. This request for a down payment on the wall, if you will, came late in the game. It kind of threw uh, re Republicans in particular because the White House really poured on the pressure at the last moment for this money. And this, frankly, was not a... Uh, debate that Republicans were really ready to have at this point. We don't have much in the way of um, planning for the wall. Uh, you know, this is all still kind of, kind of really in the very early stages. And this is a spending bill that only funds the government for the next five months. So they're looking at a limited pool of money to draw from. Uh, so that was not really uh, uh, workable, and the White House clearly got the message because they backed off uh, pretty quickly around midweek on that demand. Uh, and then you have the health care issue with the White House signaling uh, as early as last weekend, oh, yeah, Congress is going to stay in session through the weekend because they are going to pass this health care bill in the House. I don't know if you remember that. The White House was basically daring Congress to stick around until they could figure this out. Well, as we now know, they couldn't figure it out. Uh, we've got a compromise now between a moderate and conservatives that managed to bring a lot of uh, Freedom Caucus members on board to this newest version of the GOP plan to replace Obamacare, but that turned off a bunch of moderates who said that they now have uh, even bigger concerns than before. So Republicans still don't have the votes for that. They are going home without taking a vote. Um, and we'll see if they can get any closer next week. Nancy, are you hearing, uh, so this, uh, uh, this uh, press uh, interview that the president did with Reuters, there are a couple of things that came out of that, specifically uh, his comment that he thought that this, meaning the presidency, would be easier. Uh, also, those comments with regards to North Korea about a major, major possible conflict. What are lawmakers saying about that, if anything? Well, they're quite concerned about North Korea, and frankly, there are a lot of Republicans who like the fact that this uh, White House is taking a tougher line on North Korea and is showing strength. Um, but there are a lot of questions about where you go from here. Nobody has uh, an appetite for conflict in Southeast Asia. They are all quite afraid that that could escalate. And so if we are going to make threats, they want to make sure that, you know, we're doing them um, with a with a well thought out strategy and not just shooting from the hip. So comments like that, unless, um, you know, they've been uh, considered in advance and discussed and are part of the strategy are going to be troubling for lawmakers from both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, Nancy, because uh, you have the Secretary of State at the United Nations today saying that the United States is prepared to use sanctions against other mm -hmm. uh, member nations or even members of the Security Council if they continue to uh, trade with North Korea or not help with amping up the pressure. Yesterday, we spoke, as you know, to Senator John McCain. He said after that meeting that the president held with all the U.S., uh, with all of our senators, uh, that he 
did not see an attack on North Korea as imminent. And then you have the president saying there's a possibility of a major, major conflict. So at this point, does it seem as if everybody's on the same page or are there still gaps in, for lack of a better word, the policy uh, proposals that are being done for that rogue state? Well, we've seen a lot of examples now, both on the international front um, and the domestic front, where the president seems to be out of step with Congress and even sometimes his own aides. I mean, you've heard him say things that run contrary to what Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., is saying on the very same day. Um, uh, you know, he, you heard him promise last week that he was going to roll out his tax plan this week. His aides were completely taken by surprise when he said that. So there are numerous occasions where um, he seems to be shooting from the hip, if you will, and um, it's either something that uh, his aides then need to play catch up to uh, to get back to, to where he is, or uh, they have to kind of downplay his comments because it's not exactly uh, the White House line. And the White House line, frankly, is probably more akin to what you're hearing from uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. And, uh, you know, the concern, of course, is that even though um, you've got everybody else speaking from the same page, whether it's Rex Tillerson or Nikki Haley or members of the U.S. Congress, if the president is saying something else, that's what people around the world are going to hear. That's what they're going to base their decisions on. Uh, and that's where you could run into some problems if our both our allies and our enemies are getting mixed messages from the United States. Yeah, you know, I thought, uh, Nancy, that by and large, this was at least one foreign policy area where it did seem like the Trump administration, was, all, all elements were on the, the same page. But then, you know, referencing that Reuters interview yesterday, then he went and said, maybe South Korea should be paying for that, and maybe we should renegotiate, uh, you know, uh, the deals that we have with South Korea. And I wondered where that came from and whether or not you're getting any feedback about those two points that sort of we've never heard them before. Right. Well, why did he also say that he might uh, pull out of NATO, mm -hmm. or, uh, NAFTA rather, only to say, what was it, 24 hours later that he was just kidding and mm -hmm. he doesn't want to pull out of NAFTA <laughs> and he'd rather renegotiate it. Right. Um, there are a lot of comments that, uh, that, that come from this president that he himself often reverses quite quickly. And so, um, you know, I think on Capitol Hill, there's a sense not that they're often trying to interpret what he means, but rather waiting to see if he really means it. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. All right, Nancy Cordes reporting for us. Thank you, Nancy. We appreciate it as always.